After several delays, Cyberpunk 2077 is finally coming out in just a few days and many outlets have published their reviews. It shouldn't be surprising that the game has been very popular with most critics, but it's not without its flaws. Currently the game sits at 91 on Metacritic, which is pretty damn great, but that is only for PC and it looks like no one has been able to review the game on console, new or last gen. CD Projekt was reportedly very strict about review footage and prevented reviewers from sharing their own captured gameplay until a separate embargo date of the 9th, which is tomorrow at the time of recording. Instead, they had to use B-roll provided by CD Projekt, which isn't a good look for the company. Undoubtedly, this is an effort to prevent people from seeing the numerous bugs that have been reported prior to the day one patch, but it's still unethical and calls into question the integrity of the review process. Nevertheless, in this video, I'm going to try and give you some of those reviews, some good, some bad, and help you decide if the most anticipated game of all time is for you, or alternatively, just validate your opinions before having actually played the game. Just to discuss I have not played the game myself and wasn't able to get a review code, so none of the opinions expressed here are my own. Links to every review I talk about are in the description, and I encourage you to check them all out for yourselves to get the full story, as I'll have to just gloss over stuff, and you need to look beyond just the number score. First up, we've got everyone's favourite outlet, IGN. Written by Tom Marks, he gave Cyberpunk 2077 9 out of 10 and called it amazing after spending 45 hours in Night City, 20 of which were spent mainlining the story. Cyberpunk 2077 throws you into a beautiful dense cityscape and offers a staggering amount of flexibility in how you choose to take it from there. Where we go from there is a choice I leave to you. He praises the amount of choice you have in your actions and how the main story and side stories can be emotional, funny, dark, exciting, and sometimes a combination of all of them, but criticise the frequent bugs. It's a shame that such frustratingly frequent bugs can occasionally kill an otherwise well-set mood, but Cyberpunk 2077's impressively flexible design makes it a truly remarkable RPG. One review down, and it looks like the game is pretty awesome, but there are some serious issues with bugs that hold it back. Examples given of bugs range from T-posing to progress limiting glitches to immersion breakers that undermine any emotional beats. Importantly, for a game that prioritises immersion so much, that is both unsurprising and also a big issue. Such a level of detail and fidelity will make you incredibly immersed, but as a result even the tiniest glitch could shatter that and it sounds like those glitches are very, very frequent. Next up we've got VG247 which gave it 5 out of 5 stars, making it one of 14 perfect scores at the time of recording. Writer James Billcliffe said the final experience might be more familiar than many predicted, with with plenty of elements that aren't perfect, but it's dripping with detail and engaging stories. With so much to see and do, Cyberpunk 2077 is the kind of RPG where you blink and hours go by, which is just what we need to finish off 2020. He enjoyed the level of micro detail on everything from the gritty streets to the hypersexualized world and uh, first person lovemaking scenes, but also explains it's more action focused than he expected from an RPG. He also criticized the stealth and said it's only a viable option once you get a specific set of upgrades as part of the game's expansive and deep progression system. Personally, I love stealth games and will always play that way if I can, but that kind of progression actually sounds like a good thing to me because it makes it more immersive, but I can see how it could be very annoying. Bill Cliff does criticise the level of customization afforded to the player in terms of body type, which you will very rarely see since it is in first person, and posits that this is closer to playing a pre-built character like Geralt and guiding them through their choices rather than fully designing your own person. Next, let's look at Screen Rant's review by Cody Gravel, who awarded it 4 out of 5 stars and called it excellent after 40 hours. CD Projekt Red assembled a collection of the finest open world mechanics we've already seen and most of them work well. Ultimately, it feels like Cyberpunk 2077 is a fitting bookend for the previous generation of games and a strong starting point for current gen, now it's time to start innovating again. His praise is very high for what the game does right, but much of his opinion is limited by his belief that it just doesn't do enough new. That's not necessarily a bad thing, so if you're expecting something totally original and new, you won't find it here, but if you're after the best in class at open worlds and RPGs, as we know them, then this could be for you. He also compares the game to a Bethesda title, but not in a good way, saying it's also buggy, with Bethesda levels of weird happenings occurring. Most of these aren't game breaking, and the ones that are frustrating can be fixed with a quick save reload. Based on what I'm hearing and reading, these bugs are frequent and consistent, but most are not game breaking and can be resolved relatively quickly. Some of these issues should be fixed with the 43GB day one patch, but that's no excuse for launching an unfinished game, so we'll have to wait until Thursday to see how it really runs. Still in the green but slightly more negative is PC Gamer which gave the game 78 out of 100 and said CD Projekt returns with an incredible setting undermined by an 
onslaught of bugs. The volume of bugs underpinned writer James Davenport's opinion of the whole 50 hour experience. I found it moving and life affirming in the final moments, even in the face of near certain death and a relentless onslaught of bugs. I suppose it's an appropriate thematic through line though. Cyberpunk 2077 is all about V coming apart at the seams, in a city coming apart at the seams, in a game coming apart at the seams play it in a few months. Once again, these bugs are not at all surprising with me and rhyme with what I've been saying for months, if not years. Despite crunch and numerous delays, the game still has loads of bugs, just like The Witcher 3 did at launch. If you're on the fence about it, based on these reviews, it looks like your next option is to just wait a bit and get the game after a few decent patches. It's not all negative from Davenport though, as he appreciates how faithfully and unapologetically it adheres to the cyberpunk genre and all of its tropes. Moving from the low end of positive back to the very top, we've got another perfect score from VGC, which gave it 5 out of 5 stars. Written by Andy Robinson, the only bad things he had to say were all about the bugs, but it all came with the caveat that things will be better when the game launches. In classic CD Projekt fashion, the game was praised for having a great story and equally compelling side content, a stylish and interesting open world in Night City, and that it's easily digestible for those with little time, especially for such a huge RPG. Robinson called it an immersive and stunningly crafted RPG, which has raised the bar for cinematic quality in open world games, just be aware of the bug issues at release. Alright, after that glowing review, let's swing more negative now to some of the bad reviews, but realistically these aren't bad bad, they're just not as amazing as all the others. Kicking off the quote unquote negative reviews is GameSpot with Callie Plague. She played for 50 hours and gave the game 7 out of 10, listing the good and bad points at the end. Positives include the versatility of RPG mechanics, satisfying quick hacking combat, interesting and human side characters and quests, and Keanu Reeves' Johnny Silverhand as another dimension to every scenario. Conversely, the negatives include lack of meaningful things to do, choices which are superficial and edgy and don't really mean much, inconsistent incorporations of different cultures and background, I think you know what that means, lack of cohesion between the main quest's urgency and everything else you're doing, and bugs like visual issues and full-on crashes. Her complaints about the sense of urgency with the campaign are applicable to virtually every RPG out there. In The Witcher 3 you need to find Ciri, in Skyrim you need to stop Alduin, in Fallout you need to endure endless jank. All of these games have immediate, often world-ending dangers, but yeah, nah, I'm gonna go fishing or look for a lost pan. Would you help me, dear? Bring an old widow or a pan. If those distractions bother you so much, then you could just stick to the main quest. Ludonarrative dissonance is a common problem in RPGs, but it can often be avoided by just sticking to the critical path. Again, on the more negative side of the reviews, we've got GamesBeat's review by Jeff Grubb, who gave it 3 out of 5 stars and described it as a look at the present, not the future. Similar to the Screen Rant review, this one is driven by the idea that Cyberpunk does what it does very well, but it doesn't do anything new. Again, that's not necessarily a bad thing, so temper your expectations. His main point is that for a game so ambitious, it actually does very little to innovate. It's like the food vendor that hangs out not far from V's apartment. His stall looks attractive in that cyberpunk Blade Runner style that makes everything in the game pop. It helps contribute to the feel of the world, but that's all it does. You cannot interact with the stall, eat its food, or even talk to the owner. It's just set dressing. On top of the bugs, which is clearly the game's biggest drawback at this point, it doesn't seem like any of them were too severe, but their frequency and sheer volume dampened the rest of an otherwise beautiful game. The problem when a game has so many bugs is that it begins to compromise your belief in the world. The next more negative review is from Polygon, but they don't give scores. Reviewer Carolyn Petit played for 40 plus hours and called it Dad Rock, not New Wave, echoing the sentiment that the game doesn't reinvent the wheel. Building on this lack of progress, Petit has a problem with the lack of non-binary options for character creation and how picking the masculine voice will default to he pronouns and the feminine will default to she pronouns. I won't patronize you by telling you what's right and wrong, you can make up your own damn mind, but if you're the kind of person who does care about this stuff, then you will be disappointed. Petit finished by saying, it's not the revolution I hoped for, but it's something. While most other reviews spend ample time talking about the bugs, not once were the words bug or glitch mentioned, but the word trans was mentioned over 20 times. I'm not saying that's morally right or wrong, but perhaps a review should focus more on the game and its performance, and not the writer's own political beliefs? Maybe? Personally, I really don't care for this sort of stuff, and I'm sure most of you don't either, so since such complaints form the foundation of many of her arguments, I'm going to quickly move on before I roll my eyes any harder. I was going to wrap up with Kotaku's review by Riley McClellan, but they also mention the word trans over 20 time and don't mention any of the game's performance issues. Honestly, they could have been written by the same person. This channel isn't overtly anti-SJW or anything like that, there are plenty of those and we'd probably be doing better numbers if we were, but this stuff is just a joke at this point. You can care about trans representation and whatnot while also being thorough in your review of a game's actual performance, they aren't mutually exclusive. You can care about one thing while also caring about the other. Many outlets have published impressions or reviews in progress 
rather than full reviews, so we won't know the full critical consensus until after the game actually launches and we get to see how the bugs look after the day one patch. Based on these 9 reviews, and a few more I've watched and read on top of that, it looks like the game is an incredible open world RPG with a strong sense of choice and control over your character. However, that control is of a specific character in this specific universe rather than a blank slate to project your own mind onto. That isn't necessarily a bad thing, as blank slates can often mean weak stories, and once again it looks like CD Projekt has delivered on telling an excellent story with meaningful side content. After years of seeing games rip off The Witcher 3, it'll be interesting to see if they start to rip off this one. Despite the great story, incredible visuals, densely detailed and immersive world, the game is severely burdened by bugs. If you've pre-ordered, you're probably already set on the game, but if you're undecided, it's probably best to wait until sometime next year when the game is actually fully finished. There is certainly a debate to be had about whether launching in this state is acceptable given the amount of hype around it, or whether another delay would have actually been the right call. As I said at the start of the video, these reviews were limited by what they could show and some actual gameplay footage will be available tomorrow, so we'll be able to see those bugs in all their glory. Be sure to check out the reviews I've mentioned here because I had to gloss over a lot of stuff, and check out any reviews by people you trust before you make your ultimate decision. If you do end up playing the game, I hope you're pleased and have set your expectations accordingly. Anyway, enough from me, I've got a brand new PC to break in, so Cyberpunk is ready to rock my little world on Thursday. Like, subscribe, support on Patreon, enjoy Cyberpunk, I've been Henry Cooper, this has been Pretty Good Gaming, I'll catch you next time, bye for now. Breathtaking.